Okay, so what's up guys? In this video, as per viewer requests and it's something I've been meaning to do for a while, it will actually be covering the serial communication interface peripheral of the SAMD21 microcontroller. But it should be pretty similar across all the SAMD devices provided that they have the data sheet. So in this video, I'll actually be covering how we can do direct register access to manipulate the serial communication interface. So as the data sheet says there are up to six instances of the serial communication interface and each one of these can be configured to be used as either I squared C spy or use that. So if you are coming from a Arduino or PIC or um, you know the 8-bit world you are accustomed to having you know a dedicated I squared C dedicated SPI and dedicated um, USAT module but on this SAMD21 according to how we configure our serial communication interface um, peripheral we can actually make each one support any of these protocols so to really understand how that's possible there's this nice block diagram here and if you're familiar with serial communication you'll know that this is whether you're using I squared C, SPI, or USAT. You know there are some common um, some common elements you'll have. You know like a transmitter, a receiver, a board rate. You know address. Well, USAT is an exception to this. You know, in, in, in most instances, how you'll be using it, and you know whether your your mode one module and configure it to support either one. The serial communication module has four internal pads, pads um, 3 down to 0. We'll be looking at this in the code shortly. And these are routed to the serial communication pads, the actual pins, via multiplexer. What we'll actually be doing for configuring these modules is we'll be specifying the major, there are two major parts. You'll have to specify which protocol you want to use, and then we'll have to set up the pins, the routing for that particular that particular interface to the physical pins on the device. You know, um, in a previous video, I covered input and output. With the input and output feature, how a port operates on the SAMD21, you shouldn't have a problem following along with this tutorial. So let's get started and look at some actual code. The first interface we'll be looking at is USAT. And USAT is actually a very simple protocol to understand. In this video I really won't be going over any of the protocols but I'll be really going over how you can configure the SAMD21 to use these protocols because there are a lot of excellent tutorials as to how these protocols operate. We basically have two files here that allow us to use the USAD module. The actual application is rather simple. In our application all we are doing is we are initializing the UART module we are checking to see if we have data. Once we have data, we have a variable here that reads the data and then we write back the data we, we just read. This is um, like the hello world of um, UART communications. So let's say we actually implement this. So in our header file, right, we must of course define the CPU speed which is 48 megahertz. That's because we're using some delay features and we have some functions here these functions will allow us to do specific things with the UART module so we have one to initialize it and we'll let's be specifying our board rate we have another function that will use to write a character to the UART module then we'll also have to write text and we'll actually be checking to see if the module has data and another function will have to read the data so all this header file does is just provide the function prototypes for the module within the actual c file let's go over how we actually set up the uart module within the uart function we take um, one parameter here which is the board rate usually we run our board rate at around 9600 or 115200 and we can actually calculate our board rate and we can also select the 
accuracy we can also know the accuracy of our board based on the clock that we are using but we'll we'll cover that shortly so let's start so the first thing we have to do is enable the bus clock once we enable the bus clock we have to select the specific clock for the UART module I did another module on clocking so you can go back and look at that and this is where it gets kind of tricky because depending on if the pin is even or the pin is odd there's a um, slightly different registers that you must access in order to configure the UART pins in this case we are desirous of using pin A22 as our transmit pin so as we usually do we set the pin direction to an output we enable the um, peripheral multiplexer since the pin is even we use the um, PMUX E register so let's understand what's happening here so if we look at our data sheet we'll see that if we want to use alternative um, profile functions we must use the profile multiplexer enable bit um, we must set it to 1 right and we must also specify a byte offset now the profile can be selected by setting the profile multiplexer odd or profile multiplexer even in the um, profile multiplexer register so this um the alternate function for the pin is selected by the um, perform multiplexer and there are four bits of the perform multiplexer register allocated for each pin so if we look at our register summary we can see it here for our bit allocation for our odd and for even pins when we look at our code this is what we are doing here we are using the low enable the peripheral multiplexer even we are actually dividing by 2 then we use the even or odd number of the pin we divide by 2 we actually select the peripheral function C if we go back to our data sheet and we look at the peripheral multiplexing and we look at the multiplexing for odd numbered pins we will see that we can actually select the peripheral function by um, by setting these bits on the peripheral um, multiplexer so going back to the table here that shows the IO multiplexing considerations if we actually look for our pin which pin was that right so pin 23 if we actually look for pin 23 PA 23 in our table we'll see that by selecting this C right it's actually serial communication tree right so it's actually serial communication tree part one now if we had selected another value we could actually swap between three five or you know if we had selected another pin we could have selected another serial communication one or as is specified we are selecting our serial communication tree module part one so this bit here this bit of code here is what actually shows that we are using the correct pin and the correct communication module for our microcontroller when we look at our even pin which is pin 22 right when we look at our table we see that we select serial communication tree part zero if you want to determine the value of setting it to you can actually go to the implementation from the implementation you can see the defines here that specify which um, alternate profile function is selected this in this step of code in step 3 we configure pin a22 as the transmit pin and pin a23 as the receiving pin then once we have our pin set up so we selected we, we set up our clock we set up our pins our next step is to configure the control registers which is control a and control b of our user this will actually be determining whether we're using a parity bit it's asynchronous what type of clock we're using and this is where we actually 
set up the pads for actual data reception or transmission. Let's take a look at the data sheet. So how we actually determine which bits we, ac we access, we can look at the register summary here. So the controller register, we can see it, it, it has 30 bits that controls the data order, the clock priority, the communication mode, frame, um, sample rates, the which pins offer, receiving data and transmitting data, enabling software reset. We use the control A register as well as the control B register in tandem to enable the module and set up how the data will be transmitted. So these are the um, settings here. You can feel free to modify them to suit your needs, but as it's set up here, it will work well for most use cases. Next, we need to calculate the board rate, and then we will um, access the register and store the board rate in the register that's specified for that. So the way I actually calculated the board rate is if we look at the data sheet, there's actually as this section here, we can use for error calculation. There's also a section here that we can use to calculate the ratio of the incoming data rate. And this is a nice little section um, you should go over since you'll be using you at asynchronously majority of the time. So that's how we get our, um, our board rate with this formula. The last step is to action able the UART module. Now our next function is to write data. We just wait on the interrupt flag, then you write the data to the PR communication register. So with the implementation, you know, we actually write it directly to the register on the microcontroller. And then that data is put out your open and sent where it has to go. Now we take that, we take that um, write function. And to actually do is you can actually write a sequence of text to our UART module. And this is the function we used to do it. We actually write the text until we reach an end of line character. Now this will be invisible to us most of the time, but it's not visible. It's not invisible to the UART module. So once the module detects this end of line character, it will end um, the transmission sequence. Um, we also have this function here that checks to see if we have any data present on the um, on the UART module. So once we have data present, we return a boolean value. And from there, we will actually be able to read our directly from the UART data register. So that's the gist of the UART module. If we to modify, if we to modify the code, play the code, you'll be able to use the UART interface to your own devices. Now that we understand the process, SPY and SPY and I squared C will be a lot easier. So actually, have this function here. We actually send data via our SPY module within our main app run. I didn't, I didn't bother to, um, to separate these out into header and source files. Maybe I will in the future, but as for now, it wasn't necessary to demonstrate how to configure the module. As usual, enable the bus clock. We select the SPI clock source. We set up our pins. The configuration process is very similar to that of the UART. We configure the SPI module, wait for synchronization, perform a software reset, wait for synchronization again. Now this, this bit here is very important because if we don't wait for synchronization, our module won't function properly, right? We also set the board rate. We enable the SPI module. Then what we do is we send characters from zero to eight on the um, SPI bus, and then using the UART module, we view it. So if we look at the data sheet, we'll see it talks about the synchronization. This is what we need to do because of um, the difference between the um, main domain clock and profile clock domains. We look at the register summaries. So it's the controller register, the control data order, the clock polarity, the clock phase, the frame format. This is basically what we need to do to configure the um, by communication. Once you understand how to set up one of the communication protocols, it just be a matter of 
imagine some bits on the specific register that you want to access and um, you'll be able to use that. So that's what we do for the spy. So now let's take a look at the I squared C. So for the I squared C, what I actually did is I set up um, an EEPROM device. It'll write a byte of um, data to a location on the EEPROM, right? Then we'll read the data that was stored. And then we'll, we have a condition to check to see if the data was read properly. And if it was read properly, it, um, we'll be informed. And if we were not, if it wasn't read properly, we'll also be informed. For the actual files, Right, we actually have um, three main functions. One will initialize the I2C module, one will write a byte to the module, and one will read a byte to the module. With any code, you, we do our usual setup. We enable the bus clock, we select the I2C clock, we set up our pins, even and odd pins, divide by two. Then we configure the control A and the control B modules. If we look at our data sheet, Keep in mind that we are using master modes here. We can also do our slave setup. But once you understand to configure the registers for master mode, it will just be a matter of switching the registers for slave mode. So our control register will use the um, select things like our clock stretch, timeout, transfer speed, um, our hold time operating mode and um, software resets and then our B register we'll be using for um, our ACK you know ACK and ACK or acknowledge and not acknowledge but I'll be using smart mode and command enable these settings I use here will be good enough for the majority of our use cases right we set um, our standard speed it's 100 kilohertz we set our whole time to 600 nanoseconds then we um, wait for synchronization because of difference in the clock domains, as was stated previously. Um, we actually enable smart mode that sends an acknowledge bit when the data is read, right? Um, we must wait for synchronization and we set the baud rate right, as per the data sheet. We enable the module and then we force the bus into an idle state, right? Um, what trips are to be for these modules is a lot of code out there doesn't include synchronization and the synchronization is, is um, the most important well, one of the most important parts of configuring these modules because of the difference in clock speed we have a function that writes a byte it's usual i squared c setup wait for synchronization we send the device address then we any memory address we send the data and then we issue a stop command and for the read, we wait for our synchronization, we send our device address, we send the memory address, we send our restart to the slave, we read data from the slave, and you know the smart mode will handle the acknowledge and we issue the stop command. In a nutshell, that's um, spy I squared C and use that on the SAM D21. This is a long video, and I probably could have gone into a lot more detail. But I'll be linking the code in our description below for um, for you all to browse and uh, modify to suit your needs. If you have any questions, leave below. You know, I wanted to go into a lot more detail, but the video would have been too long. Um, this would have been a very long video if we went into all the details. So any clarification you need, just comment below and I'll get back to you. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks for making us video requests. If you have any other requests, um, please don't hesitate to ask. I plan on doing for completing this series. I have a lot of projects lined up for this series. It's just been um, really difficult to get the time to put together these videos. But hopefully I'll be able to do some more tutorials, some more interesting tutorials. Because once you can access our peripherals and set up our clocks, then you can really get into the neat projects. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe to my channel.